Hello. Hello, humanity. Hello, mankind. Hello, all those in booktube world. All those who are citizens of the earth. And if you're an alien from another planet, another universe, another side of the cosmos, hi. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video since it's been at least a day. And my wife is working tonight so that I can sit here in the dining room with the good lighting and I can put my books all around me. The books that I've been reading. I think I have mainly here the books I got today at well, as you know, I, I was volunteering at the local library used bookstore and then, make a long story short, I resigned. And then they asked me last month if I would come back and do Fridays from 10 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. And since I did miss it because I, get, I have gotten a lot of books over the years at the Book Nook and I like the people at the Book, the book Nook. Most of them are just elderly people like me. And uh, I like talking to the people at the bookstore, recommending books, if there's anything in the used bookstore that's worth recommending. Like today, a guy came in today in the book nook, an elderly gentleman, and he was looking at the classics, and he was looking at the, the writings of Mark Twain. And he missed one, a little paperback where it's an autobiographical, it's like Mark Twain just talking about himself, a little a paperback. And I said, did you see this? And he looked at it and he bought it. It was only a dollar. So things like that I like. Because when I go to the book nook, I, I always familiarize myself with everything that's in the bookstore. So if somebody asks me, do you have this or do you have that? I can pretty much know. There's not much in the book, to be honest, but sometimes you'd be surprised what comes in. And that's what today I want to show you. What I got at the book nook. Uh, I brought home a lot of stuff. I spent $24 today, which is a lot of money for me. Well, my wife wanted a book she called me on the phone when I was at the book nook and she was visiting her elderly friend who's 93, Pam. And Pam wanted a mystery or crime thing by Stuart Wood. And uh, she wanted a, a novel by him. And so I looked around and told my wife I had this. And so my wife, bought, I bought the book for Pam, Stuart Wood, which I would never personally read. But first of all, before I show you the used books, I got the book nook. I got this in the mail yesterday. This is the annotated Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, edited with an introduction and notes by John Matheson. I didn't know this was out, but uh, last Sunday, my wife and I, we were downtown at the the independent bookstore that's been downtown Holland for at least 45, 60, maybe 65, at least 65 years. And so I saw this and I immediately wanted it, but I wasn't going to spend $40 for it. I got it from Amazon for $27. I got Amazon uh, Amazon Prime. So I got this because John Matheson wrote a, this biography called Eden's Outcast, the story of Louisa May Alcott and her father, who was, I think Amos was his name. I can't remember his name. He was Bronson Alcott. And uh, I have another biography by John Matheson on Margaret Fuller, who was a contemporary with Emerson and Thoreau, and she was a transcendentalist. She edited The Dial, which was the, 
the magazine of the Transcendentalists. So he wrote a biography of hers. I think it's mentioned here. Anyway, I also have a paperback of it. Uh, so yeah, so I saw this, The Annotate Little Women by Louisa May Alcott by John Matheson. I'm really into Lu Louisa May Alcott because her father was a contemporary with, they were friends. Uh, Louisa May Alcott's father was a was a transcendentalist. He was friends with Ralph Emerson and Thoreau, and he was in those circles. So I have always been interested in Louisa May Alcott. This is a biography of Louisa May Alcott, The Woman Be Behind Little Women by Harriet Reason. And then Susan Cheever, who was who is the daughter, who who is the daughter of John Cheever, the writer. She wrote Louisa May Alcott, a personal biography. And then I have Louisa May, a modern biography of Louisa May Alcott by Martha Saxton. And then I've had this book for years, Alcott's A Biography of a Family by Madeline Bedell. So I, I'm kind of really into the Alcotts because they were in the, around the time of Emerson and Thoreau and Nathaniel Hawthorne and Herman Melville. And as I've mentioned many times, I am into 19th century biography. So I was really, so I've been reading this. I'm gonna call this my Friday Reads. I've been reading the introduction and in notes by John Matheson. I've never read Little Women. I've seen people on BookTube review it with not glowing reviews, but so I wanted to get it from my Louisa May Alcott collection. I've shown you this, uh, Eden's Outcast, the story of Louisa May Alcott, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. So yeah, I got that. So like I said, today I volunteered at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook, and I found another book by Patrick O'Brien. This is in that series about Captain Jack Aubrey, historical fiction uh, about him being a captain on a ship. It's a big, I think it's 22 volumes in this series. I didn't have this one. This is Reverse of the Metal by Patrick O'Brien. And I found this America's Reconstruction People in Politics After the Civil War by Eric Foldner. I have several books by him. He is a very prominent American uh, historian. He wrote a book on, on Reconstructionism that I have somewhere in my library. I've been looking for it all day, can't find it. But I got this for a dollar. And I found this book, Losing Our Virtue, Why the Church Must Recover Its Moral Vision by David F. Wells. I have his book, No Place for Truth, and his book, God in the Wasteland. He's, uh, he's like a, a social commentary from an evangelical Christian point of view. His books are really worth reading. Then I found this nature book. I like nature books. This look really interesting. It's called The Owl Who Liked, on, Who Liked Sitting on Caesar, Living with a Tawny Owl by Martin Windrow. It's a little book, but it looked really well written. It, uh, it's about this guy who lived with this owl for, little owl for uh, 15 years. It looked uh, really interesting. I like nature books. And I found this uh, New York uh, a New York Review book, Season of Migration to the North by Taibi Salah. This is translated out of Arabic by Dainese Johnson Davies. Season of Migration to the North. I got that for a dollar. Then I found another nature book. This guy, Richard Adams, he's famous for his book, uh, Watership Down. This is called Nature Through the Seasons. And it's a it's a withdrawn from a library, but it has 
really interesting uh, drawings in it, illustrations. So uh, just all kinds of things like um, it's about nature and the woods. And so it's called Nature Th Through the Seasons, illustrated by David A. Goll Gollard by Richard Adams. Then I found I found out when I got home I had this Richard Rusco, his new one. Everybody's of everybody's full, so I'll, I'll take this back to the book nook. But he's one of my favorite writers, Richard Rusco. Uh, he wrote Nobody's Fool, which is one of my favorite novels. But this is his, it's kind of like an update on the primary character, Nobody's Fool, Everybody's Fool. Then I found three books by Jim Harrison who no longer is alive, The Great Leader, The Big Seven by Jim Harrison. I had, I found out I had all three of these, but uh, I'm gonna keep them because mine are hardback, these are paperbacks. This is uh, Brown Dog, these are three novellas by Jim Harrison. He's really a very, I kind of really, really enjoy his writings. So I got those. I also had another copy of Losing Our Virtue. <laughs> I had in my library. So I'll take this back to the book nook next Friday. That's why I left the price tag a dollar on it. And then I found this a McSweeney's quarterly concern issue number 13, which is all on comics and the history of comics in America. It's really, it uh, really has all these comics in it, and it has all these articles or essays about comics. Charles Sulch, primary drawings. It just has all these uh, cartoons in it, like graphic novels, essays. I like McSweeney. When I see th anything published by McSweeney, at a thrift store with the book nook, I buy them. McSweeney, I, I, I mentioned a, while, a couple of months ago, I was really into Stephen Dixon, and they published one of his novels, I, by McSweeney. So you have McSweeney's books. They also are, they publish um, The Believer's Magazine, I think. I think that this is by McSweeney. I'm not sure. Anyway, I can't remember now if it's published by McSweeney. Yeah, it's published by McSweeney. The Believer, you'll see these at your magazine. I, I got this one because I wanted to read this. Uh, there was an essay in here by Will Self that, and I bought it online. I many many years ago, I would start collecting these, but then they were like so expensive, like they're eight dollars a piece, and I couldn't afford it. But if I see them, I buy them. I also have this by McSweeney that came into the book nook a long time ago. Uh, this is, I don't know what this really is. It's a bunch of journalistic articles taken from McSweeney. So they publish the magazines, they publish things like this. They also publish this book, Thrilling Tales, edited by Michael Shaban. McSweeney's Mammoth Treasury of Thrilling Tales. I found this at a thrift store for a quarter. Like they got Stephen King in here, A Tale of a Gray Dick. They have Rick Moody, who I really like. The Al Alberline Notes. They have Neil Gaiman, Closing Time. David Eggers, Up the Mountain, Coming Down Slowly. Uh, 
Sherman Axley Ghost Dance. So it's really it's really a fine for a quarter. So yeah, I got, I got this for four dollars. It's you know like I said, I, it has all these essays in here like. Um, Oh, let me see here. Like they have one here by John Updike, Cartoon Magic. This came out in 2003. This is issue number thir issue number 13. This came out in 2004. But I was on Amazon. You can buy these for six dollars, brand new, for twenty dollars. If you're into, see, it has a little fold-out things in it goes in here. It's just a, a kind of a nice McSweeney book. Like I said, I collect these. So as far as what I've been reading, I'll put it in my diary. I, you know, I found a, in the newspaper yesterday was this article, Jesus People. It's a history of the Jesus People. As you, those who watch my video know that I was a Jesus People. I was a Jesus freak. Uh, I became a Christian in of August of 1970, Richmond, California, next to Berkeley, El Cerrito, uh, Alameda, Alameda, uh, San Pablo, Oakland, that whole area. And I became a Christian to Jesus people on UC Berkeley campus. I used to go there and I would, I'd be, I'd have my my clipboard here, and I and I would just sit there writing whatever I saw around me, and I would collect underground newspapers. And if you were at Sprawl Plaza in Berkeley, there'd always be people, you know, tables and people, all kinds of you know, Hare Krishnas and you know street preachers and all kinds of people. You just sit, it'd be like a a human zoo of everything you can imagine. People handing out leaflets, handing out underground newspapers, handing out flyers for demonstrations or lectures or a movie or something or a, a benefit to raise money or something. And I used to just sit there and just write in my diary. And one day, a bunch of Jesus people came up to me on UC, on Sprawl Plaza, UC Berkeley, University of Berkeley, California, and invited me to a Bible study. It was run by Jews for Jesus. And so I went to the Bible study, and then they had a commune, a house in Richmond, or near where I lived. That's just a, a regular house in a neighborhood. And they, in this house, they would disciple and new Christians in the world and if you didn't live in the house you could come there for Bible studies and and discipleship and things like that. But I joined at the same time a, a Baptist church and but that's you've heard all that before. So as far as what I've been reading, let me I was gonna after I was look at my diary. Today I read uh, basically I read well I read the annotated Little Women, and then I read some more of the Decamperian by Baccalini. I read that at the Book Nook. You know, there's been a thing on BookTube going through the Decamperian with Mitamore Adam, so I read that at the Book Nook. And then I read Annotated Little Women. In the mornings, I've been reading uh, Forgiveness of Sins, Practical Exposition on Psalm 130. I also have been reading it and I found out this was an abridged or a modified edition. So I wanted to read a more a more pure text. So I've been reading it also in this edition of the works of John Owen. Volume 6 of the works of John Owen. So I've been reading those in the morning. Tell you the truth, uh, I mentioned that I read the Puritans for many years and I stopped reading them. I read them every once in a while, not like I used to, because after I read the Puritans for a while, I begin to feel condemnation. 
because I can't live like a 17th century English Puritan. All I can live as a Christian is what I'm living today. And uh, I can't live like some Christian who was a Puritan in the 17th century. I live in 2017. I live in a small Midwestern town. Uh, I'm 65 years old. I was a Jesus freak. Uh, I read Jack Kerouac. I listen to death metal. Uh, I like literature. I like art and music. Uh, I like to write in my diary. I like... I just like living my middle-class American life. Seeking Jesus, seeking to live according to the Word of God. And I suppose I don't follow any kind of denomination. I don't follow any kind of... Like when I write in my diary, when I say that I'm reading John Owen, I said this, this morning I read some 17th century English Puritan theology or spirituality. There's all kinds of spiritualities. There's Southern Baptist spirituality. There's Methodist spirituality. There's Roman Catholic spirituality. There's Quaker spirituality. There's Presbyterian spirituality. There's all kinds of ways that we can live out our Christian life. But what is really important is that we all seek to live according to the Word of God and not worry about what denomination I belong to or what spirituality I'm following. But am I following Jesus? Am I seeking to live for God? You know, there's a verse that just came to my mind. It's in uh, Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. He says in chapter 5, he says, Therefore, chapter 5 of Ephesians, verse 1, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, or all, all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints. So he says, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. That's spirituality. Be imitators of God. Well, how do we know who God is? How do we know who God is? There's, we know that there's God can reveal himself in nature in the created order. But he has revealed himself in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came here to reveal who God is. That's what the that's what you read like in the Gospel of John. When you read in the Gospel of John, it opens up. I can find it here in my Bible. It says in the it says In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 18, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. He has revealed Him. So, if you want to imitate God, we're to imitate Christ. And how we know who Christ is? as he's revealed in the Word of God. And that's what it means to be spiritual, is being dwelt by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And as Christ indwells us, and we let the Holy Spirit control us and live in us and live the life of Christ out of us, will manifest the Christian life, the Christ-centered life. That's my goal, that's my prayer, that I would, that I would be more and more conformed and transform into the image of Christ. So anyway, that's what I've been reading. That's, like I said, I've been, I, I've i read this Eaton's Outcast, the Louisa May Outcast, her father. I start reading this several times and I plan to get back into it now that I've gotten the annotated Little Women by Louisa May Outcast. 
So as far as my diary, I ended today. Today it is right now. It is 8:53 at night. It is September the 22nd, 2017. It is a Friday here in West Michigan. I ended on page 868 in my 2017 diary. So this is a Friday reads. Hope you have a good weekend. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Until next time, bye.